right, good morning everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Let's go ahead and get started. So we got our Facebook fixed so we can do our live videos again. That's awesome. Um, before we get into it, there are a few different worksheets, um, a few different activities um, that we have on our blog. If you don't have those, the link is in our bio. At the very end, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a reusable shopping bag out of a t-shirt. So if you guys have a shirt that you guys no longer want, if your parents have a shirt they no longer want, uh, go ahead and get that um, somewhere near you so we can work on that at the end. If you don't have a shirt right now, that's totally fine. Just stick around and watch it to, um, at the end and that way you can make one later. All right, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and talk about our topic for today. We are gonna be talking all about plastic. Um, what it is, um, how long it exists in the environment, what's the problem with it, what can we do to help the plastic problem. All right, my first question of, oh, actually I'll go over the worksheets quickly. Um, so I don't really have any worksheets to do during the lesson. This one right here is actually almost like a journal entry in a way. So this, you'll actually look at here and you're gonna fill out on these little lines here, all the pieces of plastic you've used during today or tomorrow if you wanna do it tomorrow. But you'll, whenever you print this out or whenever you get this on your computer, you'll observe all the things of plastic that you use in one day. And then you'll make a list here. So say you used, you washed your hair with a shampoo bottle, you would put shampoo bottle there. So list all the things that you've used that are plastic um, that you've used in your day. And then there's gonna be questions on the second page that you can answer to learn more about all the plastic that you're using. And then you can kind of figure out how you could cut out some of that plastic in your life. Um, and I'll get more to that in the end. I have another worksheet here if you watched our very first lesson um, about ecosystems and habitats, uh, we did this activity at the very end with Skittles and Cups. Um, so this one right here, I'm not gonna do it today with you guys, I'm gonna do another activity. But if you guys want to do this activity, this is on the blog post, it's something that you can do. The directions are very easy. If you want to follow along with a video of it, just go on to our very first Facebook Live video that we did with this session. So it'll be Habitats and Ecosystems, and you'll have this activity right here. And then we are going to be doing a DIY reusable shopping bag out of your shirt. Um, this will be at the very end. So again, guys, if you have a shirt um, that you don't want, go ahead and get that prepared nearby, um, or ask your parents if they have a shirt that they don't want anymore. So guys, Let's go on and start talking about plastic. So here's my first question of the lesson. My question is, is plastic a naturally occurring thing? Yes or no? Does plastic naturally occur in nature? Yes or no? All right, so you guys are all getting this one pretty well. Give you guys a few more seconds to make your vote. Is plastic a naturally occurring thing? Yes or no? All right, guys, so the answer is no. Um, Plastic really is not a naturally occurring thing. You don't find it in nature. You have to make it with other things that are found in nature. So plastic itself is not naturally occurring. It can have parts of nature in it, um, but it's not naturally occurring. Like you don't just find plastic around unless it was put there or littered. So let's talk about the history of plastic really quickly. Um, hold on one second, okay. It was first created in 1869 by a name a man named John Hyatt and he made the first plastic in 1869 and it was made from cellulose which is plant-based so the first plastic that we've ever had was plant-based okay but in 1909 a chemist um, named Leo uh, Bakelin developed the first synthetic plastic so synthetic um, another word for that is just um, artificial fake man-made not natural so synthetic is not natural so the first modern plastic that we have was created in 1909, so over 100 years ago, and it is made out of non-natural um, substances. And then in the 1820s through the, or the, I'm sorry, the 1920s through the 1940s is when we do, created even more types of plastic. So guys, there are a lot of different types of plastics, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, so what is plastic? Plastic is simply just change of, uh, chains of little molecules linked together. Um, so I have a little thing to show you guys here. 
Um, so this is a molecule to help you guys kind of better understand what I'm talking about. Um, so I gave you guys water as a very easy, easy example. So water, we also call it H2O. That means that there are two H's and one O. So the H's stand for hydrogen and the O for oxygen. So this is a molecule, all right? A molecule is a group of atoms. So H, H and O are all individual atoms and together they make a molecule, all right? Does that make sense? So this is a molecule and a molecule is made up of different atoms. So this one right here has three different atoms in it. Okay, cool. So guys, these molecules are linked together and they make a long thing called a polymer. So imagine a bunch of these molecules just stuck together and that's a polymer. Now making plastic, it's made out of chemicals from petroleum, natural gas, and coal. Fossil fuels, right? So plastic is made from fossil fuels. You heat these chemicals up, which creates a breakdown into the molecules. And so guys, they need to use heat to make plastic. Um, and then they can be made into any shape just by heating them up and pouring them into different molds. Um, the biggest thing about plastic is that the bonds between the little molecules that stick them all together are very, very strong. And that's why plastic is so successful. So there's a few different um, types of plastic and these are very strange names. You might have heard of them or you might not have heard of them. I'll give you guys a few examples. So uh, polyamide is like nylon, that's a type of plastic. Polycarbonate, you find that a lot in bulletproof glass, discs, DVDs. Polyethylene, um, polyethylene uh, terep phthalate, um, so that's a lot of your bottles and clothes, or what we call PET. Polypropylene is your yarn, fabric, and packaging. Polystyrene is packaging and styrofoam. Polyurethane, um, different other kinds of styrofoam. You also have polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC. Um, those are just a few examples of all the different kinds of plastics that we have. Um, and those are very hard to say, some of them, and very hard to spell as well. So guys, I have my next poll question for you. What is not made out of plastic? All right, so what is not made out of plastic? Chewing gum, paper cups, glass bottles, or cigarettes? What is not made out of plastic, which, is not, which does not have plastic in it? Chewing gum, paper cups, glass bottles, or cigarettes? All right, guys, so if you think about it, almost everything has plastic in it to some degree. I was uh, searching just surprising things about plastic in it, and I was pretty shocked. Um, it was actually hard for me to even make this question because I couldn't think of anything that didn't have plastic in it after I was reading some articles. Um, so I'll post the answers that you came up with. Looks like you guys are pretty split on this one. The answer is actually the glass bottle. All the other things listed there have plastic in it. So chewing gum, the first one has polyethylene and polyvinyl acetate in it. Um, it helps make it chewy. Um, so chewing gum does have a small amount of plastic components in it. And again, guys, when I'm saying plastic, I am not talking about um, like this kind of plastic, the plastic on the pen necessarily. I'm talking about the chemicals that make plastic. Um, so polyethylene and polyvinyl acetate are found in chewing gum. So your chewing gum does have plastic in it. There are brands that don't have plastic in it. Um, you just kind of have to search for the ingredients a little bit harder. Um, the brands that I saw, I had never heard of. Most of your common chewing gums do have plastic in it. Your tea bags. So the tea bags, if you like tea, are covered in a thin layer called pro uh, polypropylene. So your tea bags have a thin layer of plastic on them. Your bottle caps have polyethylene and plastisol. So bottle caps have little plastic in it. Um, like I'm talking about like glass bottles. Um, they have plastic on the inside. Your envelopes, guys. So your envelopes, that seal is also a, a type of plastic. It's synthetic latex, which is plastic. It's a thin layer of plastic on your envelopes. Your drink cartons, those also have plastic in them. They're made from paperboard, aluminum, and polyethylene. So they have plastic in them. Your paper cups have a coat of plastic along it called, uh, called polyethylene as well. So even your paper cups have a lining of plastic on them. Very thin, um, thinner than saran wrap, but it's still plastic. Your wet wipes, baby wipes, 
they have polyester fibers, which is plastic. So those all have plastics in them. Your kitchen sponge, so this is a, this is a hard one. Your kitchen sponge also is made out of plastic. It's made out of polyester and polyurethane. Um, so your kitchen sponge is made out of plastic. Um, again, guys, kitchen sponges are not the same as sponges that you find in the ocean. Um, they are very different. This is made out of plastic. All right, let's see. Clothing, your clothing has plastic in it. Nylon, polyester, spandex. Guys, the shirt I'm wearing has plastic in it. Um, a lot of our clothing have plastic in it. In fact, most of it. And uh, finally, cigarettes. So cigarettes have a plastic lining and some have plastic filters. So your cigarettes have plastic as well. So those are some very surprising things that have plastic. Alrighty. So guys, plastic is a very, very big issue. Um, Ms. Alex talked to you guys a little bit about it earlier. Um, but it's bad for just your navigation. So say you're driving a boat and you run over plastic items that could damage your boat and it could damage the people that are on the boat. If say you come to a complete stop and everyone falls over. Um, when you're driving a car, plastic bags or plastic trash bags. One time I was driving and um, the car in front of me had a big giant plastic trash can fly out of their car and it almost landed on mine. If it did that, my, wind, uh, my windshield would have shattered. Um, so plastic is super lightweight, easily flies out of vehicles all the time, can cause huge uh, danger to you guys. Uh, wildlife entanglement. So a lot of animals in the water and on land get stuck in plastic. So in the water, it's usually going to be fishing line um, and ropes that our aquatic animals get stuck in, but on land as well. So down here we have what we call key deer, which are a tiny little deer. And I just saw a picture the other day of a key deer that had one of those plastic little rings that you see on like your orange juice or your milk uh, bottles. It had that um, around its hook. So that's not good as well. Um, I'm sure you might have seen the picture of a sea turtle that found, or not a sea turtle, of a regular land turtle or a tortoise that got itself stuck within the soda pack rings. And its shell kind of looked like a figure eight almost. So it had to grow around that soda pack ring. So that's another issue. Um, ingestion, so um, especially like birds, where the mama will actually feed the baby. That happens a lot, where the mother bird will just feed that baby bird plastic, because um, it's whatever is in their stomach. Um, this, besides that, a lot of animals eat plastic, which we'll get into in a little bit as well. It's bad for the economy. So if you live near a beach, you've probably seen trash on there. And does anyone really want to visit a beach filled with trash? No. No one wants to see a trashy beach, um, so that's a very big issue. And finally, habitat damage. So plastic can be a huge problem and damage our habitats as well. So here's some just quick facts about plastic, um, especially in the ocean. So every nine minutes, plastic weighing as much as a blue whale ends up in the ocean. Guys, a reminder, a blue whale is the largest animal that we have on this planet. Every nine minutes, plastic weighing as much as a blue whale ends up in the ocean. Um, since 1950, people have discarded than 6 billion tons of plastic, but only 9% of that has been recycled. Um, researchers have found that there's an increase in plastic um, on the ocean surface and that little pieces of plastic have outnumbered the amount of plankton on the ocean surface. And if we remember, plankton is very important. It's the beginning of the food chain. There's a lot of animals that rely on it. Um, a lot of filter feeders like whale sharks or manta rays. So if you have more pieces of plastic than you do plankton, what do you think that their stomach is going to look like? Um, marine plastic pollution has impacted at least 267 species worldwide. Um, there are 51 trillion microplastic particles, um, which is 500 times more than the stars in our galaxy. So there are more pieces of plastic in the ocean than stars in our galaxy. Also, guys, here's a crazy fact for you. 94% of all United States tap water has plastic components in it, um, whether it's little microplastics or the chemicals. So tap water can also have plastic. But guys, that doesn't mean never use tap water again, because even if you buy a plastic water bottle, now you're getting it directly inside plastic. So you're still going to get the chemicals. I also want to mention, um, I judged a science fair not too long ago. And one of the students that I judged actually did an experiment analyzing the amount of microplastics found in table salt. 
and he found a significant amount of microplastics in several different brands of table salt that he looked at. So if you guys are looking for a uh, thing to do for your science fair next year, that's a cool one. Um, also makes you kind of think about just plastic is everywhere. All right, guys, so 8 million tons of plastic ends up in the ocean every single year. And we do a lot of cleanups, so I'm sure you guys have done a cleanup before, maybe. If not, you might start doing one now. Um, but one really cool thing is that if you do a shoreline cleanup or a cleanup by the ocean, you can actually go on to an app and log in what you find. So we have an app um, that we use. It's through the Ocean Conservancy. It's called Clean Swell. So if you guys ever want to use that, um, let me see, I'm loading it. This is what it looks like right here, um, just like that. And what you do is as you start collecting things, um, you can actually log in how much you got. So right here, it's very hard to see. There we go. So every time I tap that one right there, all right, that means you picked up one, two, three. So you can actually log in how much of each thing that you have picked up. And then it actually goes to the Ocean Conservancy and they create a list of the top 10 items found during shoreline cleanups every single year. So let me give you guys this poll here. What is the most common item found during these cleanups? Is it cigarettes, plastic bags, straws, or plastic cups? What is the most common item found during these cleanups? Take your guess. Is it cigarettes? plastic bags, straws, or plastic cups. All right, so it looks like you guys, some of you, about half of you got it correct. Um, the answer is actually cigarettes. So cigarettes are the most common item found. Um, so I'm gonna read you guys out the coastal cleanup um, data here that the Ocean Conservancy posted. So in 2018, so I'm reading guys from the results from the app on 2018. Cigarettes were number one. And now guys, really quickly before I read the numbers, think about all the cleanups that you've probably done or all the trash you've picked up that you didn't log into this app. So the numbers that I tell you are gonna be a lot more, okay? So maybe like times two or times three of what actually is out there. Okay, this is a very small number compared to what is actually out in the ocean. So cigarettes, 5,700,000 were collected in 2018. All right, food wrappers, 3,700,000 food wrappers were found during this cleanup, these cleanups in 2018. Straws were number three at 3.6 million. Plastic forks, knives, and spoons at 1.9 million. Plastic bottles at 1.7 million. Um, plastic bottles or plastic bottle caps were number six with 1.3 million. Plastic bags were actually number seven at 964,000. Number eight are other types of plastic bags. So um, the number seven is gro grocery bags. Number eight is just other types of bags um, at 938,000. Plastic lids are number nine at 728,000. And number 10 is plastic cups and plates at 656,000. Um, so a lot of these will actually kind of change what rank they are. So between 2017 2018, straws actually went from seven to number three. Um, so, and then from 2017 to 2018, plastic grocery bags went from five to seven. Um, so that's interesting. But guys, cigarettes have consistent, consistently been the most common item found during these ocean shoreline cleanups. So that's a huge, huge issue, especially now that you guys know that cigarettes have plastic in them. That's a big, big problem. All right, my next question for you guys is, can plastic go away forever? Yes or no? Does All right, guys, the answer is no. Um, plastic will not go away forever. Every piece, of every piece of plastic ever made still exists on this planet today. Um, it can degrade, it can decompose, which means it can break down. However, even if that item goes away physically, those chemicals that made up the plastic are still in the environment now. Um, so I'll read you guys a few things of how long it takes for these items to break down. That way you'll think twice before you litter. So plastic bags take 10 to 20 years to break down. 
plastic bottles, 450 years. Diapers, 550 years. Aluminum cans, between 80 to, 80 to 200 years. Glass, scientists say millions of years to never. It'll never break down fully. Um, paper waste, so two to six weeks. Orange peels, six months. So guys, even though an orange is a organic substance, please don't throw it out the car window because it's gonna take six months to break down. Banana peels, one month. Cigarettes, 10 to 12 years. Fishing line, 600 years. Latex gloves, hundreds of years. So guys, the latex gloves, um, definitely important to note, especially what's going on right now. I've seen a lot of pictures. I've seen in the parking lots, a lot of these gloves just thrown out on the ground. That's not okay. We shouldn't be doing that. Um, but again, guys, that might be how many years it takes for that item to break down, but the plastic that made up that item will exist forever, okay? So even though it's physically broken down, the chemical makeup of that plastic item is still in the world. All right, guys, so microplastics. Speaking of breaking down, these items break into smaller pieces called microplastics. A microplastic is a piece of plastic that is smaller than five millimeters. And these things are very tiny, especially to fish and birds and other sea animals. They mistake it for shrimp and krill and other tiny, tiny things. Um, and that's very, very bad. For those of you that live in other countries, um, even here, you guys probably may have heard of the term microbead. So a microbead is a type of plastic. Um, and the issue with that is it's just tiny, tiny, tiny little things. You can find it in your face wash. Um, some toothpaste actually have microbeads. And then let me try to see how much. Okay, so one tube of facial scrub. So one thing of face wash can have more than 330,000 plastic microbeads in it. Here in America, they're actually banned, so you can't have a face wash or any personal care product that has those pieces of plastic in it. If it says microbeads here in America, it's made out of something that's not plastic, which is great. But in other countries, definitely wherever you live, I know we have a lot of people that watch from other countries, just uh, kind of check the back of your bottle. Just check around to see if this is plastic or if it's made of a more organic thing. So the next thing that I was talking about was biomagnification. So think about a little microplastic, a little piece of plastic that looks like a shrimp or something very small. And think of a small fish eating that microplastic. Then think of a medium fish eating the smaller fish. Then a big fish eating the medium fish. And what happens is that plastic will actually move up the food chain. So that activity that I gave you guys with the Skittles and the cups, that's a very good way to see how the microplastic can move up, move up the food chain. Um, with this, you know, the fish are eating these pieces of plastic that are inside the stomach of the other fish. These stomachs, are, these fish can't fully digest plastic. And most animals can't. So they're eating, all that plastic is just kind of staying in that, fish's stomach throughout the food chain. Now, when we eat seafood, we're not eating the physical piece of plastic because we don't eat fish stomachs, right? We don't eat that, um, but we do eat the meat. And the meat is gonna have the plastic chemicals inside of it. So when that plastic sits in the stomach, the chemicals in that plastic will leach into the meat. So we are eating all those, like the polyvinyl chloride, the polyesterine, poly whatever, all those things are what we are potentially consuming. Now that doesn't mean don't eat seafood, that just means eat, uh, don't eat like larger types of seafood, okay? Because not just like microplastics, but there's other types of issues that you can run into if you eat larger fish. Make sure you know where your seafood's coming from. So I personally, if I eat uh, fish, I wanna make sure I know where it was caught, who caught it. I wanna also make sure that I know that how they caught it didn't damage any other animals. So not related to uh, plastic, but bycatch is also an issue that can happen um, where when they fish for one animal and they catch a bunch of other things instead, like sea turtles or dolphins. Um, so just make sure that if you eat seafood, make sure you're being responsible about it. You know where it came from. Um, you know that it's not uh, as bad environmentally. Now besides consumption, we know that plastic is a big problem for animals. So we know the sea turtle with the straw in its nose, just a few months ago, they actually found a baby sea turtle with 104 pieces of plastic in its stomach washed up in Florida. Uh, they found a dolphin up in Florida, northern Florida, that I think had a shower hose in its stomach. They found a shark off Miami that had all the stuff wrapped around it. 
Um, I think they found a whale in Europe, uh, somewhere over there. They found a whale with flip-flops in its stomach, and it was dead. These animals are eating plastic. They don't mean to eat plastic. They don't know it's plastic. They're not trying to eat it. So that's a very, very big issue as well, and we want to prevent that. So guys, let's talk a little bit about recycling as well. Um, recycling, so do you think a pizza box is recyclable? Do you think a, p a pizza box is recyclable? The answer is no. So pizza boxes are not recyclable. Things that have oils and grease on them are not recyclable at all. Food and liquid, not recyclable. The only things that are recyclable are cleaned out plastic bottles, glass bottles, aluminum cans, paper, cardboard, but it has to be clean, all right? if when they are at the recycling center and they see a pizza box or a paper towel with grease on it, within that load of nice clean items, they're gonna throw out the entire thing because it's considered contaminated. That's a huge issue. You don't want that to happen. So you need to make sure you're recycling properly. Don't ever throw the pizza box in the recycling bin. It's got grease on it and it's gonna contaminate the entire load. So even if your neighbor recycled perfectly, if you recycle not perfectly, then you're ruining it for both of you. Um, so make sure you make sure your things are clean and all rinsed out as well. Other things that aren't recyclable, so pizza boxes, paper towels, candy wrappers, food, liquids, grease, all that stuff are not recyclable. So if you have a paper plate and it's got food on it, do not put it in the recycling bin. It's not recyclable. It needs to go in the trash can. Make sure you also understand what your area can recycle. So to help you guys out, find a plastic item Look at the bottom, It's you can't really see it here, um, but look at the bottom of whatever plastic item you have, you'll see a little triangle with arrows and a number on the inside. That number will tell you what number of plastic it is. So this one's a one right here, and this one on the bottom says two. So this is number one, number two, and it's a type of plastic that is used to make it. Uh, most areas do recycle ones and twos, uh, but it can go all the way down to seven. So you need to make sure you understand what your area will recycle. Some areas will recycle all seven numbers. Some areas will recycle just the two numbers. It really depends on your location. Besides recycling, there's so many other things that you guys can do to make a difference in useless plastic. Obviously, the reusable water bottle. That's a big thing. Um, getting a reusable metal straw or no straw at all getting a reusable shopping bag or making a reusable shopping bag, which you guys can do in the other video I posted. I showed you guys how to make a reusable shopping bag out of a t-shirt just like this, okay? Other things, so shampoo. They actually have little shampoo and conditioner bars, so you're not using plastic at all. They also have little toothpaste tablets instead of the toothpaste containers now. Those are really good. Look out for your toothbrush. Try to get a toothbrush that is not fully made out of plastic even a razor. So razors, they have metal razors. They have ones that aren't made out of plastic. There are so many little things that you can do to get rid of the plastic in your life. Again, check out that blog that we gave you guys, that little notebook here, and look at all the things that you use in one day that's plastic and see how you can get rid of some of those. Maybe just a third or a half of what you just used today. Other things you can do, plant a tree, because guys, trees create oxygen and they clean out the carbon dioxide in the air. Do a beach cleanup. Those are very important. And when you do a beach cleanup, try to use that Clean Swell app too. That's a very helpful app. Also, just ride your bike more, ride a skateboard, drive less. Uh, when you use clothing, you know, make sure that you might have, get a shirt that's made out of a more um, organic substance. Make sure you're not just buying a bunch of different clothing, buying a bunch of toys. So another thing, guys, I know kids especially, you guys love toys. You love the Happy Meal toy but you can do without it because honestly, you're gonna play with it for maybe a day or two and then you're gonna forget about it. So before you get a toy, before you ask for a toy, maybe think, do I really need that? Do I really need that random piece of plastic? All right guys, so thank you for tuning into the second half of this video here. I'm 